Hi guys, Jenny with On Fire Fit. Today I am doing some foot exercises and I know people have asked why I have high arches or how I can walk in heels. And so some of this, I was just given the genetics from God of having a high arch. And so some of that is just beyond your control, but you can work with what you've got. You can build up your strength in your feet. You can make your arches stronger and you can do all of that, but you really want to not isolate just the feet. You have to think about the ankles, the calves, everything's connected. So really important to really think about what you're trying to do and where everything connects. So as I do these exercises, I'm just going to kind of talk you through part of it, but it's probably partly why I can walk in heels and why I love ballet and have done ballet my whole life, but just do the best you can. These are pretty basic, but you really have to kind of connect your mind to what you're doing because that's how you articulate. And that's kind of what we use as a term as we do very fine movements. And so that articulation requires a lot of concentration. Okay, that was a long intro, but just so you know what is going on here. Now, this does not look like much, but I did watch a YouTube video on foot strengthening and the doctors recommended that you do this exercise. Now I call it squinching my foot, but I don't think that's actually a word. So <laughs> I just kind of pull my front part of my foot in toward my heel, but it's just a little tightening of the arch. So you're trying to keep your heel in place and you're trying not to use your toes. This is kind of hard to do, but you basically kind of try to shorten that distance between your toes and your heel by pulling in with your arch. So now I am going into just a ankle and foot stretch. So you're gonna roll through, as we call it, articulate through your foot and try to roll up from the heel up to the toes and then pushing down one piece at a time in your foot as you go back down. As you can see, I'm seated and I just rolled up my sweatpants that I had on today, but just so that you can see what's going on here, but you could do these standing. I'll show you some of that later, but a seated one is nice because it gives you time to focus and concentrate. All right, so now I am doing one foot at a time. So I'm just rolling down one and then the other, and then roll back up with one and then the other. This will be a point to a flex. And again, it's that articulating. So you're rolling up and then rolling back down. This is really good for strengthening your ankles. And if you have problems with your Achilles or plantar fasciitis, which is the pain in the bottom of your foot, primarily usually in your heel, this is all stuff that you really need to be doing. Remember, heel pain is rarely just from the heel. It could be, but a lot of times it's connected to what's going on in your Achilles and your calf and how tight that is and what the band of tissue underneath your foot is doing. And that whole thing is not just isolated into one little spot on your heel. So trying to really work through all of the muscles is important.
These are a standing version of what I was doing in a seated position. So you could do both or whichever one makes more sense. If you're somebody that works at a desk, you can always do those seated ones pretty much anytime while you're on the phone or working at the computer. But these are really good. Now, this always reminds me of ponies, the dance step. And so the little roll through the foot and then popping the other one up great for your legs, your arches, your calves, your ankles, all of that. Okay, let's turn to the side so you can see from the back. So now I'm holding on to the chair with one hand and pretty much the same thing, just trying to keep all the toes facing the same direction, not turning in or turning out, but just rolling through the whole foot all the way up and all the way down. And sometimes it's easier to see from one angle or the other. Try not to roll your foot so that you're putting more weight on the big toe or the little toe. So I chose this angle only because sometimes people don't know what turnout is. So here's a pointed foot with no turnout. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like when you turn out. Now that is a parallel. Now here's a turnout. So you see how the heel is reaching up toward the ceiling. That is called turnout. And oh my word you should see me when I was trying to do this. So people will point their toes by curling their toes under. And I'm trying really hard to show you the difference between a long point that comes from the whole top of your leg down and what it's like to curl your toes under when you point. I actually look like I'm almost spasming <laughs> from that. It's so hard to do. Once you know how to do it right, it's really hard to do it the other way. However, I have heard that it's actually kind of good to learn how to curl your toes around a pretend pencil or something. So I guess that's good for the muscles as well. Here is another angle of the turn in, turn out, turn in, turn out. And of course, that all happens from your hip. It actually does not happen from your foot. So you rotate through the hip and you turn in and turn out. So that's really good for your hips, which everything's connected. So that is it for today. I hope that you try some of these exercises, especially if you have any areas that are weak and you need to strengthen. Of course, check with your doctor if you are having pain or you've had surgery or some kind of injury. I would always recommend that you talk to your physical therapist or your doctor first, but these are some of the exercises I do and I would love to hear from you. What kind of exercises do you need more help with? What kind of videos do you like? whatever. Thanks so much for being with me and I hope that you're living your life on fire.